uh, report. Um, our guest is Monica Vidal. Uh, hi, Monica. Good morning. And uh, Monica is a campaign coordinator at uh, Climate uh, Action Network uh, Europe with over 15 years of uh, experience leading initiatives to decarbonize the buildings and promote sustainable heating solutions. Uh, previously, she has uh, been a director uh, of public policy and climate governance at uh, ECODES, which is a Spanish uh, environmental NGO. And uh, there she was shaping the energy policy across Europe and fostering collaboration between businesses, NGOs and uh, policymakers. Uh, she has an academic background in environmental sciences with a master's in uh, industrial ecology. Uh, and today we're uh, going to present uh, um, a briefing by uh, Climate Action uh, Network Europe, uh, a briefing um, which is uh, named Making Renewable Heating Accessible and Affordable. Uh, overcoming market barriers in the rental sector. And uh, uh, it is a briefing that we translated uh, in Bulgarian, so we are going to uh, share it with you uh, after the webinar. Uh, and um, Monica, um, I'll give you the, uh, the floor now. Uh, and uh, we are going to talk today <clears throat> about um, how to make uh, the transition, uh, the energy transition uh, um, accessible to all, uh, to the um, um, not uh, not only to the homeowners, but uh, uh, how to make the um, energy transition ac accessible and affordable in the rental sector, in the for the people who are renting, and what is basically their role into the energy transition? What is the role of the of the tenants? Uh, and uh, the um, homeowners in the energy transition. Uh, so Monica, the, the floor is yours. I think that you can share your screen now. So we are uh, ready to start. Yeah, thank you Svetoslav. I'm sharing my screen. I hope you can see it now. Yes, maybe you can just go full screen. It will be I, yeah, I'm, I'm full screen. Right. Perfect. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, well, um, uh, welcome everyone. I'm I'm Monica Vidal, as Svetoslav has said. I, I'm very happy to to be here with you today. And um, today, my the idea is to present you the the briefing that we elaborate at Can Europe in collaboration with our members, including Sasemiata, um, about uh, making renewable heating accessible and affordable also in the rental sector uh, and um and uh, but before i start with the with the briefing i will give you just a uh, uh, um uh, an idea who we are at can europe because maybe um, some of you do don't do not don't know us so uh we can europe we are uh, a network of ngos uh working at eu level um, fighting dangerous climate change and uh, leading uh, joint lobby campaigns and maximize their, their impact. So we are more than 200 members uh, active in uh, more than 40 countries uh, right now. And um, maybe uh, also, I think it's um, also good for you to understand in the framework of, in which uh, framework we, we elaborate this, uh, this uh, briefing, uh, because at uh, Can Europe, uh, I, I when I joined Can Europe almost three years ago, uh, one of the my main uh, objectives was to uh, start from the scratch a new campaign, and this is this one, the One House for All campaign, uh, to promote the the renewable heating solution for all homes across Europe. So this is a solution oriented campaign, co created with members and also working with partners. And uh, what we want, the, our aim is to support the change at national level. That's why we, uh, the idea is to elaborate uh, materials, like for example, this briefing that could be useful also for our members to promote these solutions at national level. 
So this is a, this is a pan-European campaign. So the idea is to work at the EU level, but also with NGOs working outside the European Union. So we uh, favorize the participation also uh, from organizations working, for example, in the, in the Balkans region and also in Turkey and the uh, UK. So uh, maybe also, I think it's important uh, to, to give you, uh, before I start uh, presenting you the, the briefing that uh, we produced this year, uh, uh, I think it's um, also nice to share with you that last year, we elaborate uh, another briefing that also Sazimiata translated and disseminated at national level with the idea to explore the barriers and the solutions for the deployment of sustainable renewable heating solutions. So in this briefing that uh, maybe Svetoslav can share with you uh, again, the idea was to identify the barriers. So we divided, uh, we have the barriers for, for the user demand, for the industrial, for the political part, and also we included some conclusions. And of course, uh, with no surprise, one of the main problems, uh, one of the main barriers that we identified was the upfront cost uh, for the, of these renewable heating solutions. What we tried to include also in this briefing was part of the solutions or con recommendations that uh, we, um, we suggest to reduce the, the, the upfront cost and of course, to make the, the transition to renewable heating solution also for, possible for, for the people that are more vulnerable and, or maybe use, uh, use it and that uh, they are in uh, energy poverty. So the, the idea is to that, uh, that we, 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 we give and uh, we put the, the, the money, you know, the public money first in the, in the people with more need. But um, apart from that, the, that's okay. If people that are uh, vulnerable and uh, they they need uh, they need that uh, help to to renovate their home and also to renovate to upgrade uh, their renewable heating solution that they have uh, their, the heating the heating system that they have at home. Even even if we uh, find this money to 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 do that, we still have. Uh, problems and uh, and we have like um, a black spot when we are talking about the rental sector uh, because um, most part of the solutions that we can find are um, are are directed to the people that to the owners let's say so that's why we this year we wanted to do this briefing also because um, you know that in Europe, uh, well, most of you that we are all today in the cold, you, you know about the climate crisis that in, in which we are and we are all fighting for that, but we are also living a housing crisis right now. And uh, what we believe is that uh, looking for solutions to reduce the impact of the residential sector need to take, need to take into account this situation. So um, we can't, we cannot avoid the situation where we are promoting solutions for the for the for the building sector, and uh, also because there is a, a general consensus that, uh, to be fair, this energy building transition uh, should prioritize vulnerable households. Mm, but uh, most of the instruments that we have to do that. Um, they don't address uh, tenants and uh, even less vulnerable tenants in particular. That's why we produced this briefing this year. And um, you, you can see here that uh, the, the English version and also the Bulgarian one that uh, Svetoslav will, will share with you, but also our colleagues from Spain in ECODES, they also translated and disseminated the briefing yesterday. So, Let's start about some numbers. In the C region, the, the percentage of the people renting is very low. For example, we can uh, look at the, the case of Bulgaria and uh, it's only 50%. But if we uh, see that the big numbers about, about Europe, there's, there is 30% 30, uh, 30 of the Europeans living in a home that they do not own. A figure that is even uh, bigger in countries as Germany and Denmark, and especially in the some European cities. 
In the capitals, these numbers should be normally are, are bigger, for example, for the case of Brussels or Paris or Madrid, uh, and um, especially in, in cities, uh, for example, like Barcelona, where there is a lot of tourists as well. So this, this, um, these numbers are bigger. So what we propose is to bring the landlord-tenant dilemma into the discussion. Uh, because uh, what's the uh, what's this dilemma is like um these tenants they have little control if any over the investment decision that concerns the house or the apartment they inhabit uh is the owners who who do this the decisions and normally the owners they don't benefit from the investment so that's uh the the result is suboptimal decisions and that's what we call this split incentive situation, no? the, the, the landlord tenant dilemma. So what we, uh, the first thing what do we say, okay, let's recognize that we have this landlord tenant dilemma when we do public policies as well. That's the first point. Uh, and also we need to, to acknowledge that uh, people renting, they have um, more on risk to, to suffer energy poverty Last uh, last week, I saw uh, a report about the, the numbers at um, at EU level with a breakdown by countries, and these numbers are even in increasing. So that's why we need a solution also for the rental sector, because it's in this sector where the most of the people that are suffering energy poverty live. What we need to do? First of all, we need to build on what already exists. So we need to promote the renewable heating through the building stock. Uh, so even if uh, this is um, not addressed to the rental sector, because we need to uh, improve the situation and the conditions, the energy performance of our buildings, depending if the people that live there are owners, are owners, uh, are landlords and uh, are tenants, et cetera. So let's build on what already exists. And uh, for that, I mean that to improve the framework uh, conditions, uh, to end the support of fossil fuel heating, phase out fossil fuel heating, to do a proper taxation of uh, environmental harmful fuels uh, used for heating. Then we need to provide financial support, as we were saying, for the upfront cost is what we can do. Uh, we need to, 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 do, to organize the grants. Uh, loans, on bill and off bill financing, tax cut, and maybe also to promote the other innovative solutions, like for example, the heat as a service. But also we need to plan the transition uh, within the energy, um, energy efficiency directive. Now we have the heating and cooling plants. So at local level, uh, cities, they need to organize this transition at local level. And this needs to be linked with the national building renovation plans that also at national level, need, they need to organize. So we need to plan this transition. But in this planning, in this planification, we need to take into account also that there is people that they don't own the apartment or the house that they inhabit. And that's the, that's the second point. We need to fill the gaps because we need also to um, ensure that there is a necessary social safeguard that play, that are placed to to protect uh, tenants. This um, and also, for example, this uh, social safeguard could be like uh, to to avoid that the the landlords they can increase the rents. Uh, so and for example, in case that they renovate the the building. The third point that we highlight in the briefing is that uh, also the social and affordable housing uh, that can help us to address the supply side barriers while prioritizing the most vulnerable. That's uh, that's mean that um, we believe that the the social housing providers and the social agencies they have a key role to play in the building decarbonization transition. Because social housing is typically rental housing, so they are part of the rental housing sector. Uh, they own and managed uh, by the state normally or by non-profit and uh, with the aim of providing affordable housing. And uh, they own large stock of homes and uh, they might be more willing to improve the condition of the people that live there, the tenants. 
And so a strong renovation movement within the social housing sector are in place in some countries. What we uh, wanted to highlight in the briefing is that we need to, to try to do that even more because if we want to prioritize vulnerable in this transition and the vulnerable live in the rental sector, we have the, the social housing um, sector that will be one of the main blocks that we should prioritize. And we, we need to support that uh, model at local and regional level as well. And of course, information. Information is power, and we need to facilitate the access to, to, to this information about the uh, to how to switch to renewable heating, uh, not only for, for owners, but also for tenants. And uh, so they understand also the landlords and tenants, they understand the added value of uh, renewable heating in their, in their properties. So for example, when the, when the, at national level, they, they are organizing and they are um, thinking uh, and starting the, the one-stop shops, to facilitate, for example, the renovation and the transition to renewable heating, let's include also information for landlords and for tenants. So the conclusions, the, the main conclusions of the, of the briefing are that uh, while a specific tools tailored for the rental sector will be needed, because of course we will need some specific measure for the, for the rental sector, uh, a significant part of the solutions involve ramping up the existing efforts accompanied by social safe work. And uh, these uh, include the implementation of the policies, the financial incentives, and also the planning instrument that we are we need to, to do that encourage renewable heating for all property owners. And also we need to recognize the key role of the social housing providers, as I said, and the social rental agencies, because they are they can pull the demand uh, for renewable heating system in the social housing. And like that, we can address also the supply side barriers, including the lack of workers and supply chains. And uh, let's uh, finish with the bigger picture, because if the, um, if we want a transition to be affordable and accessible uh, for renewable heating in the, in the rental sector, this is not only possible, but uh, it's vital for a sustainable future. And of course, that uh, requires a collaboration effort from the EU institution, as well as the national and the regional and the local governments implementing these recommendations to overcome the, the market barriers as well. Because uh, if we want to see a society where everyone can enjoy the benefits of the energy efficient, uh, energy efficient and affordable and a climate resilience come, this the that's one the, the way to do it. Thank you very much. Uh, and uh, here you have my my de my contact details as well. If you want to yeah to share any information uh, about this or all the things related to renewable heating, of course. And I, maybe I can stop uh, sharing my screen so I can see you all in case you have uh, comments or, or questions. I'm very happy to to answer if it's possible, if I, if I can. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Monica, for the, for the overview. And um, I just have a couple of questions from my side, and then I'm going to open in about 10 minutes uh, the space for questions from, from the audience. Uh, so you can uh, just think of um, uh, of some of something that you want to address. Uh, the first uh, the first thing that I want to ask you, Monica, is um, are there already some good examples uh, from across Europe for the inclusion of tenants and landlords in this transition? Um, can you think of can you think of a good example that we can just look at and uh, try to implement in other places? Well, um, yesterday we, we organized the Renewal Heating and Cooling Day. And in that, uh, in, for these discussions, we invited uh, Alliance Citoyenne. It's uh, an organization, with, it's a tenant, uh, a tenant uh, trade union, let's say, and uh, working in France, specifically in Lyon. And um, for me, I think, this is the the way we have uh like uh, as tenants uh, as organization trying to to promote uh, the accessibility also um so we 
they, what they are doing is try to to see that they are unite and they are they have demands let's say and uh, and uh, they 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 were they succeed for example in the expansion of the district heating in, in Lyon um and uh, i think that's one of the the ways so let's let's um, yeah, be together and so that they they have demands that they they want to live in in uh, in a house an apartment that is more energy efficient and uh, they 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 want to yeah to 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 enjoy the possibility to to have a, a renewable heating solution in in their home as well. So I think that's one one of the the, the ways. Of course, um, more in the in the we need to see in in the we need to see to the future. So with the national building renovation plans, uh, it will be a, a public consultation uh, to put this uh, um, yeah for, for, to inform this process. So. Um, I think we we need to ensure that the civil society are part of this public consultation, but also tenants, because they are part of the of the problem and the solution. I say so. I think this is one of the the things that uh, we as a civil society organization we should uh, promote as well. Thank you, uh, thank you, Monica. And um, just one more thing uh, from my side. Uh, what about the what about the most vulnerable? What about uh, the ones in um, energy poverty? How are they going? How are they are being um, addressed? How are they are they being included in um, in 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 this? Because the thing is that. Uh, we know, especially in the uh, situation in Bulgaria and in other countries in Central and Eastern Europe, uh, 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 one of the greatest barriers well, is uh, lack of information and uh, basically lack of lack of trust in the government that any anything could be done for them. So, uh, what is your opinion? How the the people in energy poverty or just uh, um, the vulnerable groups, the Roma communities, the elderly, how they could be included in this in this transition in your in your opinion. I think we I think we discussed about this a lot in, in the past. Uh, uh, I, I remember a conversation with you with you about, about that. And um I think that one stop shops should be the the the, the way to, to inform the the population about the the solutions to help them in the administrative in administrative process, but uh, it's true uh, that for for this sector and uh, or more even more specific sector like for elderly etc. Um, there is a lack of trust in uh, maybe in the in the public uh, from the public sector as as you say and of course this is this this different from region to region country to country. Mm, so. In my opinion, I think we need to this one stop shop need to be uh first one of the demands is that this is happen at a neighborhood level because people they they trust their neighbor normally and uh for for that also we need to to work in with together with the organizations that are already in contact with these people uh, because they trust them because they know them. They know what they need. Uh, so, for example, I'm thinking about the uh, in collaboration with them. Uh, so I can see that. Uh... A participant has a question, so uh, Asen, maybe you can just mute yourself and uh, ask your question. Hello, uh, everyone. Uh, thank you, um, Monica, for the uh, this uh, briefing. Um, I was wondering um, how to how to invite some uh, solutions uh, on landlord-tenant dilemma if um, if tenants had no joint activities even if in the direction of uh, self organizing themselves in a in an organization so is it possible 
to address the community problem without engaging in an active group? This is my question. Sorry, I, I, I'm, I'm afraid I have problems with my connection. So I don't know if you can repeat the question, but because I couldn't hear it, sorry. Okay, so I, I, I'm canceling the video and I'm repeating the question. Uh, so how to invite some uh, solutions on a landlord uh, tenant dilemma if tenants uh, has no, have no uh, joint activities, even in the direction of self-organizing um in some kind of uh, organization uh informal or formal it doesn't matter so is it possible uh, at all to address a community problem uh, like this without engaging in uh, an active group i think it's very, it's, it's it's more difficult indeed because if you when you uh want to to try to make a change, for example, or to, for example, to, I'm in this situation, I'm, I'm a tenant and I, and I really wanted to, to change my gas boiler for, for a kit bump. And uh, so when you do that as individual uh, to, to your, to your landlord, it's, um, it's more, much more difficult to, 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 to make that change. But uh, for example, um, oh, but, but of course, the information is, is the solution, right? If you have the information, uh, in my case, I have the information. So I'm informing my landlord that if, uh, if they don't change that, then maybe in the future, they cannot uh, continue to rent in this house because uh, it will be because the energy efficiency the you know the energy level for the house it will be updated but so i think information is the power so you need to 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 yeah to share with them uh, what will happen but of course because i, I live in france and we have a a, a law now that uh, they they need to to upgrade the the energy efficiency of the of the house if not they will be out of the rental sector so we need both. We need, of course, we need we need some uh, sticks uh, from the administrative part, but also we need information as tenants uh, or, or owners. Uh, we need also this information, uh, and I think is is the way. But if, of course, if we can um, work as a group, we will have much more power. I'm going to use the space to jump in uh, right now because I uh, just thought of something really interesting because the truth is that um, I guess the majority of the um, of the people renting, at least in Bulgaria, they live in uh, they live in buildings with district heating. So uh, what is the how is the situation? Can we influence somehow? The greening of the district heating as tenant, it, it, it is really it is really hard to do it as an owner, but as a tenant, it is it, it should be even harder. So um, yeah, just maybe the the country to country difference it's it's um, it's big, but the thing is that in Bulgaria, at least in the in the bigger cities where the where a lot of people are renting, they are renting flats connected to the district heating usually. So how we can address that? Do you do you have some ideas? Well, in this case, because indeed the um, how we heat our homes, right? It is very different from country to country. That's why the the solutions need to be adapted to the to the regional uh, local context. And uh, of course, I'm not an expert on district heating. I, I will not uh, I, to 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 be honest. Um, I I never been in an apartment connected to a district heating. Uh, but uh, talking uh, with uh, colleagues that uh, they've been working on this because what, this is one of my guests. No, okay, what? And what for for the people that are connected to a district heating, but in this case, I think then you you can be aligned with your with the the rest of the people uh, that they are owners. So in this situation, you are not alone because if um, if there is an interest in in the neighborhood or in the in the city to really to to improve on to decarbonize the district heating, 
then you will be benefit you as a tenant you will benefit from that so i think in in that case uh, as tenants you are less um it's, the, the problem is 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 not that important uh the, i mean the difference between owners and, and tenants in this case i think is less important the, the problem the big problem is how we decarbonize district heating right <laughs> Uh, thank you, Monica. And uh, now for the audience, do you, do you have uh, do we have some questions for the uh, from the audience? Of course, I have a lot of them, but I'm just going to give you a chance to ask. And of course, um, you 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 can share my my email address, and uh, if um, yeah, if everybody wants to send me a comment or a question after the the webinar, I will be more than happy to to answer that. And of course, it's um what we want to do with this briefing is just to start the discussion about this because um we we thought we, we for us it, i think it's like was the rental sector is like a black spot and when we are talking about the uh, buildings or energy transition and uh, at least i think we, we don't have the, the the solution for everything of course we we don't and uh, with this we think we just wanted to start the discussion put this in the you know let's let, let's talk about this because if we really want to the prioritize vulnerables we need to take into account that the, most of them in not in all, in every in every country in every country of course but uh, in many countries most of them they live in the rental sector that's why we need we cannot avoid this situation so i i just wanted to say that this is a as the first step that uh, we are doing in this direction and of course if you have um, if you have more information, uh, things that we can use in the future to go more in deep on, on, on this, I will be very happy to, yeah, to, to read it at and to continue discussing with you. And just, uh, just one more thing from my side. Uh, is there anything that the member states and the municipalities, like member states, European member states and the municipalities on a European level, are doing right now to ensure that uh, uh, the tenants and landlords are supported. Is it something existing right now, or this is just something to uh, to think of in the future? No, I think for example we have this examples in 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 Flanders, in in Belgium, or for example here in France, and that uh, well that they are putting the some um, uh, rental caps. So they cannot. So, so the the landlords they cannot increase the um, the the rent if they do renovations. For example, this this is a way. It's a social safe word. This is a social safe safe word to protect tenants. So I think that's that's uh, that's one of the the ways uh, to do it. And also, for example, in the case of France, that uh, they uh, they are putting a limit. Uh, no, they are doing okay. If your um if your property is not uh, energy efficiency enough. You, you will not uh, put it in the rent. You will. It will not be possible for you to put it in the rental sector. So you will. You. You. Are, if you want, uh, in that case, you have two options. Uh, one, you uh, sell the, the property, or you uh, renovate the property. So in that, uh, I think that's uh, some of the the options that uh, we already identified in the, in the briefing. So you can have a look in the briefing. Uh, about the dates, uh, about the, the 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 energy efficiency of the buildings, also the, the examples of from Flanders and and, uh, and France, and um, yeah, I think that's the way. Also, for example, what we from the BBL, the the the, the Flanders uh, NGO organization, they want one of the proposals that they have for the regional government is to. Um, because now in Flanders there is an obligation to like um it's a, it's if when when you transfer when you sell the property what they are asking is that if you sell so the owner they need to change the heating system like uh like uh, an obligation this is one of the demands that they have and uh, that could be uh, an option also for other countries.
Uh, thank you, thank you, Monica. Do, do we have um, questions from the audience? Yes, yeah. yeah, thank you. Um, I was I was wondering, um, uh, link to the to my uh, first question, um, if uh, if we don't know uh, actually how the the process of uh, um, uh, building certification or uh, energy efficiency certification of the of the uh, apartments and building uh, will go in Bulgaria. And um, because it's pushed uh, away every time, and I, I don't see how and when is it is actually uh, uh, will be applied. And in this uh, in this uh, uh, fluid situation, I don't know uh, volatile situation. I don't know if uh, if the landlords could be actually uh, engaged in uh, some reasonable thinking. Uh, in the direction of uh, actually thinking, what if uh, the regulation actually is not uh, letting me uh, lend the, uh, this property if it's not uh, fit uh, some regulation to some regulations uh, as a certification, for example, and uh, um, some energy um, audit or, or some uh, activities done to uh, lower its... Uh, environmental or, or climate uh, impact so this is my more uh, like a comment or, or a question how to 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 make the the landlords think uh, um, 10 10 years from now ahead if, if i understood correctly is what do we do if we don't have this uh, this uh administrative uh this, this sticks right if there is not certification yes. if we yes. don't okay so I, I guess we in that in that case in these countries at even if we have these certifications i think um well one of the the most important things is to raise awareness about the importance to renovate the, their homes and to change the the heating system uh not only for for the climate change impact but also about the the health uh, you know the the, the consequences of uh, burning uh, fossil fuels in the in the house about the uh, about also about the, the yeah the 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 the, 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 pro, the the problems that we we can have if we don't have um uh enough uh, com um, temperature comfort uh, in the house uh so i think we need to raise awareness about the importance for for the people no that uh, renovate the house uh renovate uh, upgrade the heating system it will be only beneficial for the, for the people so we need to also that will uh improve uh everyone's um life in the end So I see one one question in the chat. It's just uh, popped in. Are there some specific measures that promote the change for a green energy for the first people that renovate their homes, like taxes or something other? Yeah, for a green energy for the first people that renovate their homes. Well, yeah. For example, in the in certain countries, they 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 promote a lot the renovation of the the homes. They the the at the national level, for example, in France, they have the Ma Prime Renov. It's a, and a, also they were they were very successful in promoting this to to at a, so everybody knows a, about this and a, so they they have a lot. They are giving a lot of money. To the people to to renovate, and uh, so I think is uh, yeah this is one of the 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 ways. And of course to reduce taxes when you renovate when you you do, do taxes if you've been renovating your home or upgrading your heating system, uh, you yeah yeah you have a uh, it's beneficial for you when you do the, your taxes, and um and for example that's made me think about uh, all the about the promotion of this information, right? Because sometimes we have uh, we have um, you know public uh, money available for for 
upgrade uh, our kitchen system or our or renovate our homes, but uh, sometimes it's, the information is not very well distributed. And uh, for example, in France, they I think they were very they succeed on, on that, and people know about Maprim Renov. I think that's that's important. Uh, I see the, for example, in comparison with with Spain, that we we have um, also this kind of schemes, but uh, these schemes are happening at regional level. So um, in every region, they need to do a specific campaign to promote these schemes, and uh, that is not is not uh, is not going good. Uh, we we have uh, in some regional uh, governments they yeah people don't don't ask for these um uh, for these schemes they don't apply and uh, and that's a problem uh, uh, we we face for example we we need to to find a solution at the national level in these countries that is very is very working like in a federal way so every every region they do that or schemes so they don't have to. Um, you know, um, a broader campaign to promote these schemes. So yeah, promo. So even it's good to have these schemes, but also you need to um, promote it and also, uh, of course, make the things easy, you know, for people to apply. That's why also the one-stop shops plays uh, an important role in there. Yeah, this is uh, this is something that I was just going to comment on because I think that in the a recovery and resilience plan, for example, in Bulgaria, we saw a measure for solar thermal and small scale PV systems. And the thing is that uh, the um, application rate, like uh, only the money were not spent, let's uh, say it in that way, in the first uh, um, in the first period of the grant. Now we are uh, waiting for the second one because the thing is that there was uh, ju just um, the application process was too hard and uh, even you had to uh, buy the systems first hand and then wait for your money to be reimbursed eventually which is not really uh, really a good measure especially for for uh, people in energy poverty exactly no no yeah you need to to make the the process uh, as simple as possible that's why these one stop shop need to to play a, a role in this um, but also, that made me, of course, think about what we said before. But we we need to build on on what is already exists on the on the EPBD. Now we have uh, an end date for the subsidies uh, to support fossil fuel boilers in 2025. So <laughs> next year, but uh, you know there is a, there are exemptions, and also if you you were talking about the 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 recovery uh, facility. And uh, in these plans, uh, what we are seeing is like many countries, they still promoting the, you know, the fossil gas boilers uh, because this is uh, because it's more energy efficient than the, the ones that the people have. So, of course, this is the one of the, the, the first things that we need to really do to stop subsidizing the fossil fuels uh, boilers. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Monica. And I see that Nadia has uh, asked something in the chat. Is already such active campaign in Bulgaria? Um, yes, we could say that there are some campaign like that in Bulgaria with uh, the, um, the one-stop shop network that should have been established. We have several one-stop shops uh, in the country. And uh, uh, I can see even that we have representatives right now from Energy Agency of Poldiv which are running uh, one of um, um, a one-stop shop campaign, which is really, really interesting. But we have several cities that are leading the way in Bulgaria. And uh, especially I can, um, yes, uh, Burgas, uh, say that Burgas is a really good example. Gabrovo uh, in Sofia, in uh, Slatina municipality, they are doing uh, a one-stop shop too. So yes, there are something happening in this direction, but uh, it should be, it should be uh, nationwide. It should be regional. It should be much more, uh, much more prominent. Um, so yes, thank you. And um, if we have um, we have time for one or two more questions. So if you um, if you have if you want to ask something, just uh, 
use the you can use the opportunity right now. Uh, otherwise, we're just going to close the webinar pretty soon. Yeah, in the meantime, maybe just, just to say that Svetoslav, that I would love to, to know more about these examples, these one-stop shops happening in, in Bulgaria, the different cases. So yeah, I would be very happy to, to learn uh, about this. And because, yeah, it's uh, knowing about the barriers and uh, the problems also to, that uh, they, they face in the implementation. So we, well, we can uh, try to, to propose some solutions, right? Yeah, we can, all, we can always uh, talk about it. We can always share information. We have an active campaign right now on, uh, on one-stop shops and their promotion. Last year, we did a, we did a tour in uh, quite a lot of the Bulgarian cities when we were informing uh, the uh, the public on the opportunities, uh, um, how they can finance build, building renovation, renewable energy, what are the current opportunities, what are the barriers, basically, what is going good, what is going wrong. Well, we were trying to uh, be kind of uh, in, uh, informative and to share uh, everything that is happening, the good and the bad also. So, um, we are going to continue to do so um, this year. Very good. So, if there if there aren't any more questions, I really um, I'm really glad that you uh, joined us today, and uh, we're going to send you the uh, the link uh, to the uh, to the YouTube video that you can uh, change uh, check uh, later. And uh, of course, the link to the report in Bulgaria. So thank you, thank you, Monica, one more time, and we'll be in touch to to discuss uh, some other issues. Thanks to you. Thanks for for all for your engagement, and uh, yeah, happy to continue the discussions. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye.